Welcome to Agloop TV. We're really excited that this is our first episode that we're doing to launch this TV station. Um, I'm Leah, this is Tyler. Uh, we're from Precision Hawk, a drone manufacturer based right here in North Carolina. We're actually at a cattle ranch uh, research farm that we fly at with clients. Uh, we're about maybe two months away from actual crops being planted here. But as we get closer to the season and, and you guys start thinking about how you're going to integrate new technology into your farm workflows, we wanted to take these next few weeks to, to segment out what are, the, what are the new technologies that you should be looking at, number one, when it comes to drone technology. What types of sensors should you be using? Um, what are the applications? And then how are you making sure that you're getting actionable uh, decision making power from every single UAV flight that you do over your farm. And you know, we get asked all the time, what is the best thing or how should I use my UAV on my farm to increase what I'm doing and make a difference? And that's exactly why we wanted to come on AgLoop TV to, to really be able to educate and answer questions about um, how to use a UAV and how to use that data to really make a difference in what I'm doing in my daily farming techniques. So today we're going to get started just by talking about the hardware. And like I mentioned, each week after this, we'll break down some different parts of the system from collection to analysis uh, on, your, on your farm using a UAV platform. So like I said, today we'll be talking a little bit about hardware. Make sure that you tweet us your questions at Precision Hawk um, or at Agloop TV so that we can start answering those as we go week by week. Uh, at the end of this four-week segment, segment we'll end up doing a live show where you can actually tweet in and we'll answer your questions live. But if there's anything you want to know, make sure you're staying in touch with us so that we can answer that as we go along. Like I said, this is for you guys. This is to educate you on the next best thing and the next steps to really get your farm moving into 2015, into 2016, and all of the really great technological advances that are ahead. I'm holding the Precision Hawk Lancaster fixed wing UAV. This is a UAV that we manufacture. It weighs under five pounds and has a flight time of about 45 minutes. With this UAV, I can cover about 300 acres in a single flight, which is really great, especially when I'm talking about going out and flying on a farm. So what I'm holding here is a quadcopter. So this is what you see in a lot of media outlets. This is what your normal hobbyist would be flying. You guys might even be flying some of these over your farm right now. This is from a company called DJI, um, and they manufacture these. It's the most widely sold uh, platform right now on the market. But one of the questions that we get asked all the time as uh, we manufacture this fixed wing aircraft is, as a farmer, how do you know? Do you want a quadcopter? Do you want a fixed wing platform? what is best for your specific application? Because it's gonna be different. These have two very different applications. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're looking for a platform that's serving your exact need. And some of the differences of the applications that we can use, they, they really vary drastically. With a fixed wing, it's very good at scanning a large area. So if I have thousands of acres on my farm, utilizing the fixed wing UAV, I can cover all of those acres in a day's time. Whereas the quadcopter, it might take me a little bit longer. But if I have something such as a grain elevator that I need to do a inspection on at the top of it, where I need to sit in a single place and look at something, a quadcopter is very, very good at that. And one of the things to note, I know that Tyler mentioned at the beginning that a fixed wing aircraft can fly for much longer amounts of time. So between 45 minutes to an hour, and that's constantly growing. But these quadcopters have a little bit less uh, amount of flight time. So you have to switch out the battery a little more often. These platforms are definitely more so used on an enterprise level scale. So on a full farm management system. And we'll talk more about both of these uh, types of platforms later on in the show. When you're reading articles uh, in the media all the time, one of the things that a lot of UAV companies are saying is it's all about the data. The data is what matters. But how are you collecting the right data sets um, for your specific application? How do you know that you're getting what you looked for? So what is actually collecting the data is what we call a sensor. Uh, we at Precision Hawk, we have integrated 15 different sensors into our particular platform. 
but all different UAVs have different sensor options available. So for us, some of the main ones are visual, which is just your basic camera, uh, multispectral, which lets you see your field in different bands of light, and hyperspectral, which is like a multispectral on steroids. Uh, and then we also fly thermal, so you can look at things like crop health, um, and a LIDAR, and a few other different options uh, that you can look at on our website, precisionhawk.com. But when you're looking at all these different sensors, they're expensive, and a lot of companies like ours allow you to rent them if you don't want to make the financial investment to buy each one. But you want to make sure that when you're buying a sensor, you're getting the data that you need to make better decisions on your farm. So we're always asked, what sensors do I need for what I'm doing on my farm? And it really depends on what exact applications you're looking to accomplish. I can do a lot of that with a couple of sensors, being a visual sensor and one of our multispectral sensors. With the visual sensor alone, I can do things ranging from being able to determine the slope on my field, which allows me to plan for drainage and tiling, as well as irrigation. Um, I can also use that throughout the season to figure out what my plant height is. So I can get a good idea of how my plants are growing throughout the field, um, and potentially even being able to actually count each individual plant in the field. So if my planter skips, I can catch that early enough and go back and replant. With the multispectral sensor, I can start to see things that I can't see with my own human eyes because it can see in different bands of light than we can see. And with that, I can really start to see some more advanced things that's going on with the, with the plants. I can see information about the nutrients. I can see general health of the plant, so I can get a good idea of do I need to go apply some kind of a spray, a herbicide, a pesticide. Um, I can start to identify diseases. So in a potato field, I might be able to identify and map out potato blight. So these are just a couple of examples that we can do with a couple of our sensors. And in a farm aspect, you're really looking at a visual sensor and a multispectral sensor to get started. With all of these sensors, with the Precision Hawk Landcaster platform, they're all plug and play. So I push the sensor in the bottom, the computers on board, the, the UAV know exactly what that sensor is and knows exactly how to collect data for that sensor. So we've, we've streamlined that process to make it easier on the farmer to be able to collect the data that he needs. One of the most overlooked factors when most people go to purchase a UAV is the ease of use of that platform. One of the most important things for us as a company, and I know a lot of other UAV companies on the market right now, is the ability to go out and fly every single day without being a registered pilot, without being an engineer or a geospatial analyst. You want to be able to buy a platform, go out in your field, throw it in your truck, and be flying every single day. You don't want to have to take a lot of time to take classes or become a certified pilot. This is something that should just be part of your flow, like I mentioned before, like your John Deere tractor. And with the Precision Hawk Landcaster UAV platform, it's really as simple as I take it out of the box, I put it together in a minute and a half, and then I create a flight plan. And when I create a flight plan, I'm not actually drawing lines back and forth, I just give it a box of where I want it to fly, and it figures out the rest. Along with ease of use, one of the things you want to look at in a platform that you're investigating uh, to bring into your workflow is how much intelligence is in the platform itself. So we consider our UAV platforms to be flying robots, and they have to be packed with a lot of artificial intelligence so that you are hands-off in the process. You literally go out into the field, you want to be able to put the plane together, like Tyler mentioned, and just throw it up in the air like a paper airplane, not have to worry about it. The more hands-off you are in the process, the better the end result will be. And when Leah talks about putting the plane together, it really should be just as easy as I click every all the parts together, I click go, the motor spools up, and I toss it. It figures out the rest of its flight, it knows how to collect the data, and it comes back and lands by itself. Um, from that point handling the data, I pull the stick off the plane, plug it into my laptop, the software does the rest. It really should be that easy so that there's not a big learning curve to figure out how to get the information that I need to benefit my farm. The difference between Precision Hawk and other companies, I think, in the space really boil down to two key differences. One is the ease of use, and two is guaranteeing the data quality coming into the pipeline. When you have better data in business, you make better decisions. And Precision Hawk provides the ability for people to collect data more accurately than ever before. They have more choices on the type of data they collect, and they can do it as often as they want.
How do I know that I got what I came for when I went out to fly my UAV to collect data? With most UAVs, it's not as simple as one might think. It requires you to manually trigger a camera, or it's based on just a timer, and I, I hope that I get the coverage that I need to be able to process that into something useful. With the intelligence that we've built into the Precision Hawk Landcaster, we've automated that to where our plane knows what good data is, so it builds its flight path based on what it knows how to collect that data, and it actually triggers that sensor based on a specific time point or distance location so that we get the overlap on all sides of that image so that we don't have to worry about coming back out to the field to collect data that I may have missed the first time. A good example of that is needing to go out uh, go out to your field right before a storm in case you're anticipating any hail or anything that might damage your crop. You want to be able to be out in that field collecting the data you need in one full sweep, come back and know that you're going to be able to compare that data after the storm. You're not going to be missing anything. So when you're standing with your crop adjuster, your crop insurance adjuster after a storm, you have the information that you need uh, to make sure that you're getting uh, what you deserve after, after a potentially big storm. So we all know that this past Christmas, uh, drones were the hot present to get. And it's true, you can find drones on Amazon.com. You can find drones at your local Radio Shack. Uh, those are not what we're talking about here. So when we're looking at pricing, yes, you can buy a platform for $500. The quadcopter that we had earlier is around something like $1,500. And a platform like ours, with all the right sensors, can go up to $20,000 or more. So I think when you're looking at pricing, you want to make sure you're getting that return on your investment. Talk to different adjusters and different companies about the types of data that they're collecting and the quality of data they're collecting, the types of decisions you're able to make on that data. So you're seeing that return. And it really comes down to what am I looking to get out of the data? With some of the lower end drones, I can get maybe a camera, typically a GoPro, that I can get really cool live video from. There's not a lot of application I can do from that other than potential infrastructure monitoring like we talked about earlier with grain silos. Now with a higher end platform such as the Precision Hawk Landcaster and its higher fidelity sensors coupled with its data processing and analysis tools, I can start to pull a lot more value out of the information that I'm collecting which really allows me to get a better ROI on what I am going out to collect that data for. And we are already seeing all over the world in Latin America uh, we're, we're flying all over Argentina and Brazil, Australia. We're seeing the actual benefits on the back end, and we know that you're going to see those benefits as well with a tool, not a toy. As we continue over the next four weeks with our continuing episodes in this series about utilizing UAVs on the farm, Please feel free to ask us questions. We want to make sure that we are answering the questions that you have so we can ensure that when you go to purchase a UAV, you're making the right decisions based on the, the types of applications that you need. And Tyler and I were actually just out in Mississippi a few months back in the last grow season. One of the really cool stories that we were told uh, was a father who wanted his son to stay on the farm. And I think that what we're seeing now is a lot of younger people who want to stay on their family farms because they have these new technological tools, these really cool applications uh, that they can start implementing into their work life. For the next few episodes, I'll just tease you it a little bit. I know that what you guys are going to ask, can I even be flying right now? The regulations are a huge part of this conversation and that's something we'll touch on, we'll give you the details, we'll let you know how can I start flying commercially, how can I start flying over my farm so that you're aware and you're informed uh, and if you need more resources we'll be able to point you in the right direction. So make sure you join us in the next few weeks and we're excited to be a part of this new AgLoop TV.